What I'm going to cover today is the bending of the nose skin for my Zenith 650B that I've been constructing. I checked my YouTube videos and it looked like it's probably been about, it's been a little over a year since I posted a video last. Uh, air, progress has been continuing on the airplane, uh, albeit at a slow rate, but, uh, but progress just the same. I finally got to a point where I decided it would be a good idea to go ahead and bend the skins. And of course, this is the the first result of the the result of bending the first skin, which I'm happy with the happy with the results. I figured I'd go ahead and document what I've done. Uh, there are some other videos uh, out there that I've seen where people have uh, also shown bending the nose skins, and the technique I'm going to use is similar to those in that I'll be using a vacuum cleaner to generate suction to pull the sides together to form the Form the, uh, form the nose radius. I am doing things a little bit differently, I think, than, than uh, the other videos I've seen. Most videos rely on using something like a uh, single piece of, I think it's Schedule 40 or Schedule 80, 1 and 3 eighths diameter pipe. I had some concerns about the rigidity of that setup, which I'll go into detail uh, a little, in a little while. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to take a slightly different approach on handling it. So we'll go into the details and uh, and also demonstrate actually uh, going ahead and forming the second nose skin. Okay, one thing I'll go ahead and cover real quick is the is the process of going ahead and folding up the skin. Uh, and this also uh, similarly applies if I'm say rolling up a piece of aluminum for storage. Uh, the one thing I do like to use is uh, or I found useful to, to go ahead and use is uh, just basic packing tape. I know that a lot of people use uh, use duct tape and uh, I know the only concern I have about duct tape is that it tends to leave a lot of residue behind if you've got uh, something stored for a long time. Uh, this can leave some residue as well but I don't consider it near as bad as the residue that's often left behind by, uh, by using duct tape. The other thing to always keep in mind whether you're using duct tape or packing tape is it's always a good idea to fold over uh, a bit of the end so that you've got a nice little pull tab so you aren't sitting there having to use your finger trying to try to scrape that piece of tape off to, to be able to pull it off. The other thing I go ahead and do uh, is go ahead and pre-position my tape. So I'll go ahead and get one side taped and then just leave, uh, you know, leave whatever amount I need hanging over. And I do, again, a similar technique if I'm rolling over large pieces of aluminum. Uh, the end that's going to be on the outside, go ahead and put the, uh, put the tabs there. And then that way, as you're rolling over the aluminum, when you get to the end, you'll roll over that sticky portion. And then, the, uh, and of course, the aluminum automatically sticks. So I'll go ahead and uh, start folding this thing over, and uh, this is actually pretty easy since we're already pre-bent. Uh, it it's not that hard to, uh, to, to go ahead and get this to bend over. So there it is, all uh, folded up, and it'll get stored up on top of the, uh, uh, on top of the, cross beams that I've got set up for being able to flip the wing as, as well as uh, move the wing skins. And of course, as you can see right here, uh, you know, you've got the little tab. When it comes time to pull it off, I can just rip that right off and, and, uh, and of course, peel it off from the other side uh, with a little difficulty. So one thing I'll mention is the way that I cut this is I use, my, is, uh, use these electric shears, which I reviewed in a, in a separate video. And because of the problems that uh, I can have with rippling on this, and of course also, actually, I'm still not very good at, at cutting very straight lines. What I do is, you know, I'll have my reference, mark, my reference mark here, and then I'll just draw another line about 5 to 10 millimeters outside of that, and then I'll come back with my hand shears and I'll trim that up to size. Now, actually, this won't be the final trim size. I'll do my final trimming once it's actually on the wing, but still, you know, I want to make sure I've got as straight a line as possible. Uh, plus, I don't want, want any uh, want any waviness. Uh, the other thing that I found when using using this is, at least on thinner pieces of aluminum, it does have a tendency to uh, to, to cause some waviness. And, and since this is uh, for the skin, I want this to be as as flat as possible. Okay, one thing I also do just to make sure that I've got the uh, form I'm going to use to keep everything centered is after, of course, having my center line drawn, then I go ahead and draw a couple of of uh, reference lines because obviously if the form is sitting over this then there's really no way that I can verify for sure that it's underneath but if I go ahead and have these edge lines drawn here then I can just put up like a right triangle or something like that or, or even just glance down and just try and get an idea and 
course, since I'm using thick lines here, I had some problems with my, uh, my thin line red pins. Uh, I went ahead and drew a thick line, but then just to also know which edge was the edge that I was drawing against, I always go ahead and put like little, uh, put like little tick marks on here to indicate that. So this is my take on uh, how I wanted to handle the form that will help uh, create the nose on the nose rib. Now this right here is uh, outer diameter is 1.325 inch uh, inches uh, PVC. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of people uh, in videos that I've seen demonstrated will use uh, Schedule 40 pipe, and the concern I had with that is that even with a you know steel pipe, you know you're talking a very long length over a uh, you know using a very thin piece of pipe, and there's going to be a tendency for there could be a tendency for flexing. The reason there can be a tendency for flexing is that as the The reason there can be a tendency for flexing is that as the sheet is starting to bend, uh, what can happen is that edge will catch and lift up. And actually, when I had done some earlier tests, uh, just trying to verify whether uh, the PVC on shorter test links would work, I did actually observe that effect. So, uh, you know, it sort of concerned me a bit uh, that even with the steel over such a long length that I could run into the same problem. So, my solution to this was to go ahead and use this but then also attach a piece of a three-quarter inch uh, plywood. Uh, the length is eight inches, and uh, uh, it's attached with, uh, attached with screws from the, from the back side. Uh, the only other detail, I'm trying to uh, try and zoom in on it here, is that there does need to be a way to Keep this, uh, you know, keep this piece of PVC centered. Now, in my case, what I did is I got a one and three eighths inch uh, router bit, and basically stuck that into my mill. I didn't have a router table that would be suitable for milling this, and put this in my, uh, uh, put this in my mill, and basically milled the eight foot length plus the four foot length on the other end. Now, I suppose another alternative, of course, if you didn't have something like that, is you is uh, you might be able to come in with a, uh, well you might be able to do it freehand with a, a freehand type router. Uh, I didn't consider myself uh, steady enough to do that so you know, I'd gone with this option. Another option could have been uh, is just put some extra little pieces of wood onto the side here to basically form a little uh, V. It doesn't necessarily have to be a perfectly round, it just needs you need something there just to provide some support for the PVC so it doesn't slip to the side uh, either uh, when you're actually constructing this or when you're uh, uh, actually trying to do the forming, you want something to, to keep that PVC stabilized. And then as far, now I did mention of course that I've got four foot, uh, obviously the sheets of plywood at least that I have access to, you can't do, uh, you know, don't come in, in 12 foot lengths. So uh, my solution for handling that was to go ahead and and just splice these, and just splice these together. Uh, I mean the aluminum, especially after you know running my first test, the aluminum is more than more than adequate to keep the keep things from spreading apart. I've got you know looks like a total of ten screws across here, so there there you know there's more than enough support. And it's really not a, too much of a problem having this joint here unglued, because as the you know any lifting that's going to happen is going to be you know more in this direction, which would tend to spread this apart and compress this together. So, uh, you know, my, initially I thought about gluing this together and then uh, decided that it really wouldn't be necessary uh, just because of how the bending. And of course, a uh, similar way on the bottom. Get a few of it here. You can see where I've got uh, uh, holes in the bottom here and then screws through the other side. Uh, to be able to attach this on. Again, it's not attached with glue or anything like that. Uh, I mean, the, the stiffness comes from the plywood itself. Then, of course, like I said, at least one test to get an idea of what the stiffness is, is just to go ahead and pick this up and see if there's any indication of bending on it. And, you know, when I was taking a closer look at it, there hasn't been any problems with, with, uh, with flexing in, in this direction. I think the other advantage of this is is that uh, after I'm done with it, I can go ahead and break this down. I'll basically have like a, an eight-foot piece and a four-foot piece, 
and that'll make it a lot easier to store. So if I do make a mistake and have to make another no skin, then I can wrap, I can relatively quickly put this back together again and form me up another uh, no skin. If I had a 12-foot uh, long piece of steel, uh, you know, I'd either have to you know figure out a place to store it at or take it apart, and uh, and then you know I'd have to weld it back up again because obviously you couldn't have any kind of of external joints. Okay, so at this point what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up the uh, done a basically a, a rough fit of the uh, of the form and of course you'll notice you know no hands holding it up uh, I'm using one of the uh, one of my uh, workpiece holders that's uh, fabricated from a uh, uh, just basic uh, camera arm clamps that just got the uh, got the uh, little claws on both ends and that comes in real handy for supporting stuff like this so what we'll do now, I've already taken the time to go ahead and get everything centered up. Uh, I'm not necessarily trying to get it exactly perfect because I'll be uh, doing more, uh, uh, there's additional room on here for trimming once I get things lined up onto the wing itself. But I'll get everything uh, pretty well centered here and uh, straight. So what we'll do now is I've got a couple, is I've got some clamps that I've made up and I've got some holes in the block that I showed earlier. And so I'll just go ahead and get those uh, lined up on there and go ahead and screw these down. And then this will, once I get both ends screwed down, what that will do, of course, is just keep everything stable. Uh, keep this vertical while I get it, while I get everything taped up. And then, of course, when I'm actually doing the, the, the vacuum forming process, uh, you know, it will allow everything to stay upright. And then one other thing you do have to deal with is, of course, this is a 12-foot long piece of aluminum and a 12-foot long table. And you've got to have some way... To uh, to secure the uh, secure the form, uh, so the way that I dealt with that is just go ahead and just you know screwed on an extra piece of wood to form a little extension that I can uh, uh, set up some straps to be able to secure that, and I'll demonstrate that fully in a bit. Okay, so at this point I've got the screws uh, all secured down, and this is uh, at least tight enough that it, that it will support itself. So we can go ahead and remove the uh, remove this clamp that was uh, supporting everything. And so at this point, we are good, uh, good to go to go ahead and start working on the taping and drawing these two sides up. So the next step in this whole process will be to go ahead and start getting the edges taped together so that they meet in the middle. Okay, so at this point I've got all the, uh, got the tape initially set and now what I need to do is just start gradually working my way back and forth until the, uh, the tape is fully pulled in and the ends of these meet together. Just taking a taking a look down the line. Now you will notice there is uh, there may appear to be some curvature there. I did notice that when I did that in my get this thing centered up a little better. <clears throat> uh, I noticed that occurring uh, in my uh, when I did my first one. Uh, I'm not sure 
I mean, I do have a little bit of an offset here. There's about a quarter inch offset. I had that before as well. I was trying to keep from doing that, but it wound up happening anyway. Um, so, but anyway, I had gone ahead. I mean, when I went ahead and did my bend before, uh, everything came out just fine. Uh, even even though uh, this is is taking up the full length of aluminum, uh, there will actually be quite a bit of trim back on this before it's all said and done. So I'm not too concerned about this, uh, you know, if I have to trim, you know, trim a little extra off to get everything squared up. And then just to take a look and see what things look like down below. I can get, get the camera so you can see what things uh, look like from the inside. So the next step will be to go ahead and get the plastic wrapped around and secured. <clears throat> And uh, then we'll uh, uh, go ahead and get this thing formed. Okay, so at this point I'm ready to go ahead and get the plastic uh, draped over the uh, uh, draped over the aluminum. Now for the ends, what I'll do is again I've seen I've seen people uh, try and, and tape this stuff up, but actually what I found worked uh, quite well is just using these uh, very large uh, paper binders, and I can just take these and just uh, uh, you know basically fold the plastic up and use several of these clips to uh, to hold the plastic together, and that way uh, that way I'm not having to you know mess with with trying to just get everything taped down. So that's what we'll go ahead and do next. And then the other thing I've got to do as I'm doing this is I've got to leave enough of a enough of a hole right here, or leave enough of this pipe sticking out so that I can hook my vacuum cleaner up. Provide enough uh, resistance to air leakage that we should be able to pull a good vacuum, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, and that should be good enough. I'll do a similar operation on the other side. It's just that I won't have a piece of pipe sticking out the other end. Okay, and then this is just a quick look at what the far end looks like. Again, same thing. In this case, since I don't have a piece of uh, uh, PVC pipe to try and uh, get through to the other side, all I, need, all I needed to do was just, was just fold this up and basically just use these clips to try and keep everything together. And one other thing I'll mention that I'm going to try differently than what I did before. When I did this before, I went ahead and ran a series of clips across the top. Uh, but I got to thinking about it that uh, Hopefully having these just draped over and then just, you know, the one piece of tape like I've got right now just to sort of keep everything from slipping off uh, should allow for enough, uh, uh, reduce the leakage enough so that we can get a, a good compression on this to, to form this nose skin. So we'll get the vacuum cleaner set up. At this point we're ready to go ahead and start the vacuum. Now one other thing that I'm doing here, uh, again I, I know I've seen some videos where people will tape this thing on. Uh, or take the end of the nozzle on, and I found it uh, more than sufficient just to go ahead and put this over, and then I can just sort of cover that up with my hand, and that's more than more than sufficient to uh, to uh, you know stop the leakage to allow this to go ahead and collapse. So we'll go ahead and get the vacuum cleaner fired up. It'll get a little noisy. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably try not to make any comments because you probably won't be able to hear me anyway. So here we go. Okay, so that's the suction process. Uh, we'll go ahead and go ahead and get everything uncovered and see what we have.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the uh, clamps removed and we'll get this uh, get this form out of the way. Let's see what we really got. So from what I can tell, things look pretty good. Looking down the line, it looks pretty good. It looks about like the same result that I had before. Uh, the other thing we'll take a look at here is uh, see if I can do a quick test fit of a, uh, one of my nose ribs and just make sure that I've got a good fit along here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do a, just a quick uh, smoke test as far as the fit, just to see what things look like. And I'll just manually bend this over. And from what I can tell, things are looking pretty good. Uh, I am seeing just a little bit of a gap, just looking at the camera, seeing a little bit of a gap there, but I think part of that's just I can't get uh, even tension on here all the way around, and I think once we get the rivets in, everything should pull in quite nicely. Uh, of course, there's no way to know 100% for certain, you know, how this will work till I, uh, till I uh, actually try and fit it. Uh, and generally, I would make one and then complete and make sure everything works before I make the second one, but in this case, I wanted to go ahead and make both of them. I was satisfied with the results, plus I wanted to, uh, uh, I didn't want to leave this uh, form set up for an indefinite period of time uh, until I could use it again. So, I mean, I'll go ahead and break it down and I'll have it available for, uh, in, in the event that I uh, do have problems or, or mess something up and I need to go ahead and make another one, uh, I'll still have it available. So this is a little addendum to forming the nose skin of the wing. Uh, I did notice one problem. It looks like maybe in here there might have been a little buckling. Now I don't know if it showed up, if it came out on the video or not, but I I had heard I'd heard a popping sound a couple of times, and I don't. It's possible it may have been this. Now it's not particularly bad, and I certainly didn't get anything like that on the uh, on the first nose rib or the first nose skin that I did. Like I said, it's not particularly bad. I may go ahead and run with it as is. I might maybe try and get a hammer in Dolly and maybe see if I can just push that out a little bit. But I just figured I would go ahead and uh, uh, inform everyone that at least for this particular wing skin, yeah, there, there was a, a slight problem that, uh, that had popped up. Actually, I guess one other thing I can go ahead and mention. Now, when I did my skin the first time, uh, if you recall, the splice that I did was a piece of aluminum with screws on it, and I didn't put any tape over it. And I didn't have any problems the first time, but I did notice the second time around that I did get like a few little uh, scratch marks. Or actually, the scratch marks are over here uh, in, this, in this area right here. So uh, it would have been a little bit smarter for me to, to have gone ahead and, and maybe thrown a little duct tape over that or something just to make sure that, uh, that nothing could dig in or anything like that. Again, it was something that wasn't a problem the first time, but... Uh, sort of uh, became the problem the, the second time around. The, sc the scratches are minor. I mean, I don't have to scrap, scrap the skin or anything. I can, I can uh, buff that out with a little bit of Scotch-Brite and, and it'll be just fine. So that's all I'm going to cover at this point. It's hard to say when I'll do another video. Uh, I want to wait until I get my first wing completed before I start making videos and I'll uh, more thoroughly document the next wing uh, and show anything interesting there. Uh, of course, if I do come across anything else interesting that may be sort of like a one-off or something like that, then I may go ahead and, and do a video, but uh, this will be all that I'm covering for now. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know.